Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Speaking Logically. My name is Scott McKenna. And I'm Emil Tarasi. And today we're doing kind of a read along or walk along, if you will, episode where we're going to talk a little bit about screening for ETFs. So if you guys are listening to this on any of the podcast streaming platforms, we definitely recommend if you're going to listen to the audio to also jump on the platform. So if you want to go ahead and sign up for a free trial to do that while you're listening to this, go to app.logically.finance slash sign up, enter your details. And then uh, what you're going to do is actually drop in a promo code where it asks you if you have a promo code, uh, say, yes, you have a promo code and enter code logically, L-O-G-I-C-L-Y 2020. And uh, that way you guys can pull up the stuff as we're talking about it. So as we're talking about ETF screening, some of the best practices, things like that, we're going to be showing off the platform. So we want you guys to have a visual while we're doing this. If you guys are watching on video, no need to do anything. You can sign up if you'd like, but we're going to show it to you in the screen share. So Emil, why don't we jump into it? What you're going to do is actually drop in a promo code where it asks you if you have a promo code say yes you have a promo code and enter code logically l-o-g-i-c-l-y 2020 and uh, that way you guys can pull up the stuff as we're talking about so as we're talking about etf screening some of the best practices things like that we're going to be showing off the platform so we want you guys to have a visual while we're doing this if you guys are watching on video no need to do anything you can sign up if you'd like but we're going to show it to you in the screen share so, Emil, why don't we jump into it? Number one, you know, I think advisors often come to us because they are curious about ETFs and, you know, they might be primarily in mutual funds. So on a webinar that we hosted yesterday, you know, I would say about 30% of the people that were on, we had about 100 registrants, they said they only use about 15 to 20% of their portfolio in ETFs. So, they said they had jumped on to learn a little bit more about ETFs. So I wanted to do this kind of bonus episode of Speaking Logically to help people like that out. So before we dive into ETF screening, Emil, why don't we just talk a little bit about some of the advantages that ETFs provide over traditional you know, mutual funds or investing in single stocks? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Well, ETFs are... Uh, you know, fair, much, I guess much more n- newer, uh, a newer product than uh, than mutual funds. Well, obviously the first uh, ETF showed up in 1993. Uh, mutual funds have been around for a couple of decades before that. So let's talk about how to pick ETFs, right? So I'm an advisor, you know, I was traditionally in all mutual funds. Okay, now I'm interested in getting started with ETFs. You know, where do I start? Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's a good question. It it is a challenging environment because there's 2,300 ETFs in the U.S. and counting. And the innovation. So if you think about you know the ETF as as an envelope as a wrapper, and what you can put in there, people are getting more and more creative with that idea. Um, it started out with just equities. We went to commodities. We went to fixed income. And now we have active strategies embedded in ETFs. We have fund of funds. We have um, what's been really important and, and uh, a lot of traction with ETF issuers this year has, have been the uh, options embedded strategies. So um, things that sometimes they call them defined outcome where uh, you can get exposure to the S&P but up to cap in exchange for some sort of downside protection. And uh, these are all super interesting products. On the surface, it might not be easy to understand you know, which products are best for your portfolio. Uh, what we try to do is organize all this data, um, bring all the different metrics that you might be interested in, um, especially when you know, figuring out which ETF to put in your portfolio. Uh, we bring all these metrics into one place and then you can easily compare and contrast. Awesome. So why don't we jump into the ETF screener and take a look at some of the ways 
that we can break down and screen for ETFs? Yeah, absolutely. So the screeners, basically the feature is on the uh, Logically platform, which uh, Scott mentioned the URL earlier. It's app.logically.finance. And when you go on the left navigation, you can hit screener. And there's kind of two approaches to the screener. The first is the approach that you see right away, which is a, what we call the predefined filters. Um, we've basically grouped uh, ETFs across very uh, all different types of categories. Um, and it gives you kind of a quick, easy way to, uh, you know, see, for example, if you care about technology, well, you know, there's eight US technology sector ETFs and there's a hundred billion dollars benchmark to it. Um, you can do this across sort of a lot of different themes, uh, dividends, factors, we've grouped them all uh, by region, by um, uh, you know, large cap market cap exposure, by in the fixed income space, by uh, credit quality investment grade versus high yield. So uh, this is all sort of easy to uh, navigate and explore uh, ETFs. But what we really want to show you today is the detailed screener. So if you click on detailed, what you get is a real uh, powerful tool. First thing you'll notice is there's uh, about 9,000 funds in our database. And the reason for that is that we're a global database. So everything, you know, we'll focus on the US today because that is the, you know, it's the biggest market for ETFs. Um, but everything we do, we do with a global tilt because this platform is being used around the world right now. Um, for screening uh, ETFs in you know, the 50 plus countries where ETFs are traded, namely in Europe uh, and in Asia Pacific. Uh, so uh, Japan, Australia, uh, China, Hong Kong, uh, et cetera. So you wanna filter down, you've got, I guess on the left side, you've got your filters. Um, and then on the top, you've got your views. The left side can help you filter by almost um, sort of any metric, any important metric. And on the top, you have different views. We can go through them a little bit, but you've got your standard uh, kind of metrics. Uh, the, the views essentially group different metrics together. So uh, we've got, um, for example, a risk button. Uh, we've got a returns uh, grouping. We've got a volumes grouping. Um, we've got, you know, those are all sort of quantitative numbers. We, we also have a lot of qualitative characteristics of the ETF. So if you want to know, for example, its benchmark or its classification, uh, we have uh, groupings for that. So one example is, you know, if you wanted to look for all S&P 500 benchmark ETFs in the US, a trade in the US, you would go to the uh, left navigation, you would uh, go to general, you would, uh, under trading country, you'd hit US. Those 9,000 funds now whittle down to about 2,700. So that's ETFs plus some other fund-like structures that we, that we monitor. And then um, if you wanted to filter down by index, you would go to the benchmark filter and uh, it's kind of conveniently at the top because it's one of the biggest benchmarks. Uh, so you hit on uh, S&P 500. So then you would filter on S&P 500. And there are a couple S&P 500s. Some are like net total return, total return. But you just type in S&P space 500. And uh, there's a couple. So you just click on um, you know, a few of them. And you'll see that there's about 40 funds that track that. So you'll notice there's there's innovator funds. I was talking about them earlier, they're, they're called defined outcome options embedded strategies. Um, uh, you obviously have, uh, you know, the short ETFs uh, that also track uh, like the ProShares Ultra or ProShares Short. Um, so, so you can kind of get it all here. Let's see, let's, uh, let's try to kind of think about particular uh, use cases. Let's say that, you know, you wanted to um, look for uh, 
uh, ESG names that have, uh, of course, all the largest ESG names, and then maybe double up with uh, names that have had strong flows um, this year. So the way you do that is, again, thinking about the qualitative uh, aspects of filtering, you can actually go down to, um, well, actually in the general tab, scroll down to tags. Uh, actually, before we do that, we should probably reset our filters. Um, so again, going back to uh, trading country, US, and then uh, filtering down again, down in the tag section, you can type in like ESG. So we've got about 61 funds in the US that have um, sort of ESG characteristics. Um, you can see that like the, uh, the AUM is, is uh, benchmarked here. So we've got about 10 billion, uh, the largest fund appears to be a 10 billion fund. It's the iShares ESG UETF. Um, actually, the top three uh, are iShares funds. One's uh, USA, one's emerging market, one's IFA. So let's say we wanted to kind of get a better feel for these funds uh, on a flows basis. So we could look at uh, both grouped and trailing flows. So trailing looks at fixed periods back in time from, from today and grouped looks at uh, month by month uh, grouped flows. So this kind of gives you a feel for how much money is going into these funds. Again, ESG is one of the bigger, bigger funds you see over the last three months, it's had $2.6 billion in inflows and all of these columns are sortable. So if I want to say, okay, on a three month basis, show me the biggest uh, uh, flows or inflows. Um, just click twice and uh, ESGU sort of remains on top. Actually, the, the three funds, because they're the biggest, also have had uh, the most flows. Um, if you wanted to see, for example, which uh, on a, let's say, three year time, time scale, um, if any funds had um, outflows, for example, um, surprisingly, not much. So if there's if there's a blank, it means maybe those funds haven't really been in existence. But yeah, on a three year scale, um, there's been no ESG funds with outflows. Um, never awesome. Flows. So talking about ESG, since we're on this tag, you know, I think a lot of advisors that I've spoken to are a little bit confused. And I understand why there's a lot of different ways that people define ESG, right? And metrics that particularly they care about. So looking at this list of 61 funds, you know, obviously they have ESG in the name and, and that's why we tagged them, but how do we really know how environmentally, which is the E, right? Socially, which is the S or governance, which is the G, how do we know if those really stack up to those values that, you know, we're talking about when, when we're talking about ESG, you know, whoever yeah. it is, however yeah. they define it. Yeah. Great question. And the short answer is there's a tab for that. So there is an ESG view. Um, let's think about a little bit of a workflow here. So let's say you did want to drill down on some of these funds and, and understand their real ESG exposure. So again, we, we are filtered here on this ESG tag. Um, clicking, clicking here on ESG will bring up a whole host of uh, different ESG metrics. So uh, I guess, first of all, you can kind of see how many securities are in each basket. So what we're doing here is we're actually taking the individual securities in each ETF and then using uh, our individual stock ESG metrics in our database, and then multiplying that by the basket weights and then displaying that data here on the screener. So what that allows us to do is get, again, those E environmental social governance scores um, on a, a aggregated portfolio weighted basis. Um, and then you can kind of you know, let, let's filter this data a little more because this ESG viewing right now is kind of uh, stocks across the board. So one thing that we want to do is 
go down to uh, classification. Let's just focus on like US. Uh, so US listed, but US exposure ETF. So under classification, you could do exposure country and then select US. And we bring that those 60 funds down to about 42 funds. And then we want to say, okay, well, show me the one with best, um, uh, let's say, ESG environmental score. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of click on that column and we can filter filter down uh, by it. I might have to do it twice because one goes uh, sort of reverse. Uh, I'm going to do it in descending order. Um, and now you have a relative ranking of those different ATF, of those different um, ESG scores for these US exposure US ETFs. Um, and it turns out it's not the largest ETF with the best scores. Um, it turns out it's this Deutsche Bank product, uh, or X Trackers product now. Uh, the other interesting thing about this ESG screen is there's, there's a lot of other columns down to the right here, which I'd like to kind of scroll over and show you. Um, one of the interesting things about being able to look at the basket is now we can tag individual companies uh, for what we call warning flags. Those warning flags uh, basically uh, will tag individual stocks uh, based on cert certain warnings. So here we've got um, you know, alcohol exposure, gaming exposure, pork, defense, tobacco. It's basically looking at to see if there are companies in these ESG funds that might have features that you uh, may not uh, want to be exposed to. So again, let's say filtering by alcohol, uh, this like, you know, Naveen ESG mid cap value ETF, it's got about 2% exposure um, to alcohol stocks. Um, so this could be like something like Diageo or, uh, or similar. Um, you know, there is a, a tremendous amount of data on here. So one of the things we should emphasize is that you can just um, select uh, this Excel button here and you can download all of this data in just a second or two to an Excel file. And, you know, Excel might be a little bit easier to manipulate large amounts of data. Excellent, yeah, it's super in depth. And I think, like I mentioned before, that a lot of people have different definitions of ESG or you know, metrics that they care about. So being able to break that down, for instance, you know, if you're, clients are religious and, you know, they don't want exposure to pork, you can go ahead and, and try to, you know, edit some of that out of the portfolio to, and that's a great value add as an advisor, because then it shows you, it shows the client that you are, you know, thinking about their values and implementing portfolios that meet those same values of your investors, right? Which I think as an advisor, that's a huge bonus to strengthening the client relationship. Um, I also wanted to, I think we should talk a little bit about the newest feature, which I think a lot of people have been excited about. Uh, I know some advisors were asking about it and that's the rankings. Yeah, absolutely. So the rankings is a powerful way to sort of filter, um, on along D -Siles. So what we do is we basically look at all of our metrics in our database and basically across the entire uh, global universe that we have. And we rank uh, certain metrics in 10% uh, buckets. So uh, let's reset filters here real quick. So again, back to the default view, uh, click on rankings. Uh, what we've done is we've essentially uh, looked at volume, expense ratio, performance, volatility, yield, and diversification. And we've ranked these six metrics um, across the entire globe. Um, now, again, there's about 9,000 funds in here. If you wanted to filter that down, what you would do is you would go to the rankings left navigation filters. And you could say, look, I only care about things that are in the top uh, 20%, right? Let's say I want the most liquid. So you'd say, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, ninth ranked and 10th ranked. 
um, uh, that brings that 9,000 things, 9,000 uh, row screener down about 1,400 funds, and you just keep filtering it down. Uh, so we want, you know, the cheapest funds, so lowest expense ratios. Um, now we're down to 263 funds. We want the um, uh, the best performing ones. So across a one year, we do, we have a one year total return um, performance look back here. So we're going from 263 to 59 funds. Um, and then let's also say, you know, before we constrain this too much, let's look at like the highest income stuff. So, so the, the stuff that yields the most on a, this is a fund dividend or distribution basis, uh, fairly 12 month basis. So, so again, let's hit uh, the top 20% and it turns out there's no funds in that category. <laughs> so you can't have the best of all worlds. Uh, we might need to relax, for example, that, that income thing. So let's just say, we, we care about the top 50, you know, the top half of um, exposures. And we get down to about 27 funds now. Um, so that took a while to kind of filter through all that. The lucky thing is that we can uh, click on, uh, we can save that filter by hitting save filters and then saying, you know, top ranked US listed. Right? And now that filter will show up here um, if you're logged in, uh, a lot of these features are available when you're logged out, but obviously when you're logged in, you have customization and the saved and persistent things that you can come back to when you need to. Um, and, you know, right now we can't really see what these actual values are. So that's where the custom view comes in. So again, let's go back into, on, on the top, you've got the, uh, this add button which allows you to create this custom view. I can go in here and say, you know, top, top, top rank metrics, right? And I would say, you know, I want yield. So let's look at that trailing 12 month regular yield. Um, I want the name of the ETF, oops, yield. I want the name of the ETF. Um, I want it to say UM. Type in AUM. I want its, um, let's see, uh, its volume. So, like ADV, let's say on a 20 day basis. And uh, we didn't filter for volatility, but let's say we, we want to also look at like the, the 20 day risk numbers, right? So, you hit apply, and that basically saves that custom metric. It saves up there on the view. And now you can see your top ranked. US listed names and actually see what their uh, yields, and volumes, and AUM are. And then if you want to uh, download all that, uh, it's quite easy. You just hit uh, the Excel button right there. And in a few seconds, you get that all. So, what other metrics? I know we kind of jumped to the rankings, but what other metrics do you think are important to, to look at when we're talking about screening for ETFs? Yeah. So I think one really powerful concept here is the nav, uh, the nav tab. So in the nav tab, you, what we do is we obviously get daily navs for these funds, but we also get, uh, the, uh, the close prices and what, what we can do is then start comparing, um, the nav versus the close and calculate the premium premium and discount. So as we've discussed on maybe on some previous podcast, one of the most important things in understanding the cost of an ETF isn't just the expense ratio, it is also where you're trading, how much, how much it costs you to get into that name and how much it might cost you to trade out of it when it's time to you know, rebalance or um, divest from that. So a premium and discount basically says, you know, at the close, um, how far was that name trading versus where the fund was actually priced versus its NAV price? Um, obviously, these are super liquid names. Um, they they seem to vary uh, across. You know, there there's some bond uh, fixed income names here. There's some 
mostly large cap names. Um, this is, uh, well, I should note that this is uh, global, uh, not just US listed. But um, when you go, I guess the, the field is a little bit off the screen here, but just going off to the right, you will actually see the calculated premium discounts. So a green number means that in this case, SPY is trading at a slight premium. Um, and you know th this is tiny, right? This is about three basis points um, versus you know some other names are trading at slight discounts. So for example, this one's trading at a 40, almost 40 basis points discount. These are all kind of fairly, you know, at what point do you start really worrying about how big a premium or discount um, is, you know, will cost you. It, it depends on the market, depends on the ETF, but, you know, generally something in the single digit basis points uh, is, is fairly good. You know, if, if you were to ask me without knowing what the ETF was tracking, um, obviously things that uh, track, you know, international names might have wider spreads, wider, wider premiums or discounts. Um, also in the fixed income space, the ETFs tend to be more liquid than the underlying holdings. So sometimes you may see disconnects there. Um, you know, if we go and look at like, let's see, these, uh, you know, this is actually a little interesting. This uh, UK version, UK listed version of the S&P 500 Vanguard fund has a much larger discount. Well, that's because the Vanguard fund in the UK is closing in roughly, you know, morning to noon to noon time in the US and the US market closes at four. So uh, that premium or discount in this particular case is uh, because of the timing discrepancy. Uh, so that's a little bit of kind of more complicated stuff there, but um, th th these metrics, you know, in summary, these metrics are quite important um, and you want to watch out for, for when these get very large. Excellent. And I also want to touch on risk. I think when we're, when we're talking about advisor technology, risk is one of the points that is always coming up. I think advisors use a lot of risk tolerance tools, risk questionnaires, things like that. So how do you screen for ETFs using risk metrics? Yeah, so our risk metrics today are sort of the basic things that you would expect. Um, we track volatility along many different time dimensions. You know, on a 20 day basis right now, SPY is trading at about 16% vol. You know, I think obviously calculating volatility is the most sort of accepted way of looking at risk. Now there's a lot of other risk metrics that are, uh, you know, can, can help you better understand what kind of risk exposures you're getting. Um, we're looking to add more and more of those over time. So what you see here, we have about 150 metrics at the moment um, across all these different views and groupings. We'll be adding more risk metrics um, in time. So things that you may care about, for example, are a sharp ratio, which is a risk, um, a risk adjusted return. So it's return over risk. Um, but it's also kind of thinking of it as sort of a normalized return score. Um, also looking at drawdown metrics, um, understanding in a drawdown, you know, peak to trough, um, how, how, how big was the drop? Generally, you want to seek investments that um, sort of mitigate uh, the roller coaster ride. Obviously, all of these things all kind of tie back to simple volatility metric like we have here. Uh, and by the way, all these metrics update uh, regularly. So whenever you see these numbers here, they're up to date uh, using the most, you know, the latest information that we have available. Perfect. Um, I think that pretty much covers, you know, overview of everything you can do on ETF screeners. I do have one question. So let's say I'm an advisor and I wanted to look at, you know, some metrics from let's say risk. So I want to look at, you know, the 40 day volatility. I want to look at the 
you know, year to date returns. I want to look at, let's just say, the rankings of costs, the expense ratios. How can I get all of that to in like one view, right? Because there's so many tabs, but I just want to look at like three or four key metrics all at the same time. How can I do that on the platform? Uh, so yeah, yeah, Scott, the easy way to do that again is just adding a new view. Uh, I think this is a really powerful feature. We recognize that there's you know 150 different data points here and probably in the next couple of weeks, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we'll be adding more. It may, I wouldn't be surprised if our number of data points doubles um, in the next month or so. And again, we're looking at adding tracking error, adding deeper and more interesting risk, uh, risk measurement metrics. Um, we've got ESG metrics now, we've got basket analytics. Uh, you know, the, the basket analytics alone are so powerful because they um, really allow you to dive into the basket, see what the underlying exposures are, get concentration scores and diversification scores on the basket. So obviously tons and tons of data. Luckily, easy way to bring all, that, all the data and data points you care about in one view, save that view when you're logged in, and then download the data um, in Excel uh, if that's what, you know, if you're comfortable in Excel. So, you know, to, to kind of get to where you wanted to, let's just say, you know, Let's create my custom view. You said, I want some volatility numbers. Um, I want AUM. Uh, I want to know what the benchmark is. So put, you know, benchmark, uh, um, uh, benchmark name. Um, let's look at, you know, return metrics. So let's say return over one year. We've got six month, three month, one month, and then uh, year to date. So like, I want to look at one year and year to date. Uh, let's look at flows. So you could do, again, grouped flows or trailing flows. So let's look at year-to-date flows and let's look at, um, you know, flows that are in this current month. So um, that's uh, this past, you know, October, I suppose. And, you know, if we're not sure, we can just keep scrolling down. Oh yeah, let's add AUM. Uh, let's add NAV, last close price and, um, and the uh, NAV price. And then we just hit apply. And all that data, data updates in about a second. You get all the metrics you need. Um, if you wanted to clear the filters and get everything, you know, you can get all that data, almost 9,000 funds and counting, and see, you know, what are the most volatile names. Oops, I might have to click on my custom view again. Um, uh, see where the NAVs are. Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing as well is for people who are interested in the global data, every price um, is normalized to uh, USD at the moment. Um, in the future, we'll be normalizing it to your local uh, currency settings. But uh, that this way, you have an apples and apples to apples comparison. For example, if you're looking at flows or looking at like AUM, you can easily compare everything because it's in dollars. Awesome. Perfect. I think that wraps up, you know, helping advisors better screen for ETFs. I think next time we can jump into, uh, let's say, you know, narrow, once you've narrowed down and you, you have two ETFs diving into that comparison, uh, we'll save that for another day though. So thank you guys for listening. And again, if you didn't have a chance to hop on the platform and check out some of the stuff that we've been talking about and showing, you can go ahead and request your free trial, go to app, dot logically dot finance slash sign up enter your details go ahead check yes for have a sign up code and then go and enter the code logically l-o-g-i-c-l-y 2020 confirm the end user agreement and then sign up and you'll be able to access uh, the etf screener that we just showed you and if you guys have any questions or need help you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to do a one-on-one -on -one demo with you guys. My email is scott at etflogic.io. Um, if you want to reach out to Emil for the more technical stuff, Emil's always happy to, to nerd out with anybody that wants to chat with him. Uh, so you can reach out to him at emil, E-M-I-L, at etflogic.io. Thanks again, guys, for listening to Speaking Logically. If you're tuning in through Apple, Spotify, or any other podcast hosting product,
platform. Again, you could watch these videos now on YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel. Just go on YouTube, search Logically. We have a channel, like, subscribe, follow us there. We're actually going to go live once in a while on there as well. And all the podcast episodes, you'll be able to see the videos to see our lovely faces moving forward. So thanks again, guys. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for listening. All right.